Hello and welcome to Win Some Loose More. My name is Dieter and you join me for Why I Like, a series of videos where I take you through some of the games in our collection and I tell you why I like them. And today I'll be telling you why I like Takenoko. Now Takenoko is a two to four player, very cute game about laying tiles, using, uh, moving a little panda around to eat bamboo whilst a frustrated gardener is trying to grow the bamboo to impress the emperor, trying to score different points. Why don't I show you a bit of how it works and then we'll come back and I'll tell you why I like Takenoko. So here we have the game set up for three players. Each player starts with their player board, which will act as kind of a reminder as well as a storage area for various things. And they start with their two action tokens, which you'll place on the various actions to show which ones you've taken. And they also start with one each of the objective cards of the different types. Uh, one about geography, whatever you'd call that, how you arrange the tiles. One about the different types of bamboo that your panda should eat. And one for how you want the gardener to grow things. In the center of the board, we start with this uh, tile, which is the center of the garden. And on that we place the little gardener, nice little piece, where is he, there we go, little gardener man, and the hungry little cute panda. So they go on there to start, and a very simple just arrangement of everything else we've stuck up here will come to them as we go through. So, on a player's turn they can do two of the five available actions. So this first action here, and they can't do the they can't do the same action twice. Each uh, action that they do has to be different. The first action here is draw three new tiles, add one of them to the board, and put the other two back at the bottom. Um, pick up an irrigation token, which would go here unless you want to play it. Uh, move the gardener, which makes him uh, bamboo grow. Move the panda, which makes uh, bamboo be eaten, and every time the panda eats bamboo, it goes in his tummy here. Or draw a new objective card of one of the three types. This is a bonus card for whoever gets the uh, tri uh, triggers the end of the game. Um, so in a two-player game, that's the person who completes their ninth objective. In a three-player game, their eighth objective, or in a four-player game, their seventh objective. So it won't last very different lengths depending on the players. Um, and this we will come to, this is from round two. So for the first one, uh, for my two actions, let's just move it up so you can see, I am going to draw three tiles. I get to look at them but don't show them. They are of different colors. Oh, I've drawn four, that's cheating. I draw three, only three, I will have counted, and go, oh, two yellows and a green. This one's useful because it automatically comes irrigated. Normally land has to be irrigated. Um, what are my objectives? Well, I need yellows, so I'm going to take one of the yellow ones and put the other two back. What shape do I want it in? I want it round like that, so I'm going to place one here. Now, because it is connected to the center, it is automatically irrigated, and any time a new plot of land is irrigated, it automatically grows one piece of this lovely bamboo as well. So that goes there, that might be my first action. What else do I want to see? They're both to do with pink, so I won't do that. What will I do? I'm going to take an irrigation piece for later, and that goes on my board. Now as the game goes on, that's me, turn done, that comes off. As the game goes on, new tiles are going to come out. Let's just arrange them however. So either you connect them to the central bit, or they have to be connected then to two different things. And so as the game goes on, people will have arranged them in various ways, depending on what they've been doing. Let's just put that there. And if it's been automatically irrigated, it gets, oops, one there. Let's say one there, one there, one there. What I might want to do later in the game, if I've been able to get two irrigations, not as an action, just as a free thing, what I might want to do is connect always from the water source out to a new location. And any that it's um, 
next to, so the point doesn't count, it has to be on one of the sides, this is now irrigated, it automatically grows. So that's what would happen there. Uh, if I was to move the gardener, I have to move him in a straight line according to the edges. I can't move him diagonally, so I couldn't move him to the pink one. Any that are on the various axes, and he would help it grow as long as it's watered, as it's um, irrigated. So let's say I moved the gardener, I moved him here. I would then add one of these bamboo pieces into the one that's already there, and any other of its color connected to it that is also irrigated. So that one would get to. Good, that might be what I want to do. Or if I move the panda, again, it has to be in the axes that it can actually move, not diagonally, not across this line, but any flat edge. So I could move him as far as I wanted, but let's just move him here to eat this piece of bamboo, which goes on my board uh, and go some way to completing this. Now, if at any point in the game, let's say I do have the two pieces of pink bamboo, I then reveal this card, place it face up, and spend these back, he's pulling them out basically, back into the supply. Similarly, with this one, if, let's just cheat and find a yellow, let's say this is here, and we have managed to irrigate it. So this one grows, oh, it's in the wrong position. Again, let's really cheat just to show you what it looks like. If it was here, <laughs> let's put this back. That now is three irrigated yellows in the shape we want. I would reveal this, that would have been something that I'd won. And similarly, if I have a stack, or they're on the board anyway, there's a stack of four pinks high on a tile that has this See if we can see that, there you go, this symbol. Now, some tiles automatically come with symbols on. So this one has the panda can't eat here thing already on it. But some of them, you would need to place these tokens. Now, as I said, this dice comes in and these actions at the top come in from the second round. So in the first round, everybody just does their actions from the second round. Before you do your actions, you have to roll the weather die which has these different sides, which do different things. So I would roll it at the beginning of my turn. Uh, that one is wind, which means before I couldn't do the two, two of the same. This time I can, if I want, I can do two of the same actions. But if I ever draw the cloud, which is this one, what I can do, I can take into my supply one of these tiles, any of them that I choose. Let's say I want the, no, let's do the one we were using for example. So this tile here would go into my supply. There's a little space for it on my board. Da -da -da, there. And again, similar to the irrigation, anytime I choose, I can just place this onto any tile that does not already have a token on it, whether printed or placed. And this would then, let's say it's go here. That particular one means it is now automatically irrigated, whether it's connected by the tokens or not. And so if I can get that one up to four high, it's got that thing on it and it's four high, that would give me the six points I would reveal that. So as you can see, as you succeed cards, you're gonna to wanna to draw more. Uh, you keep going, as I say, until somebody has completed their um, seventh, eighth or ninth, depending on player counts. Uh, the first person to do that gets the bonus favor of the emperor, which is just an added two points. Everybody else has one more go. And then you count up put the points and whoever has the most points wins. So why do I like Takenoko? Well, I'm, I'm just gonna hold this little guy up again. It, this, is, this is one of the cutest pieces in gaming. I think there's one other game that I can think of that probably has slightly cuter pieces, but this, this, this is really close as to being the cutest piece in gaming. And I'll just show you the box again. This art style is lovely. This is exactly my kind of thing. Um, it's it's beautiful. I mean, the, just the beginning of the rule book is a little comic telling you the story of, of what's happening about one, uh, I think, what is it? The Emperor of China giving the Emperor of Japan uh, a panda as a gift of peace. And this is now your role in trying to look after his garden, but at the same time now feed this panda that he 
has and uh, controls. Um, it's just a lovely, cute little theme. Now this is relatively simple game. Uh, we have taught it to uh, a few different people, some that play games, some that don't, and it has gone down relatively well with both kinds of people. Now it's, to me, not quite a gateway game because there's a little bit more to be thinking about but that theme is so accessible, so cute, those pieces are lovely, those really chunky bits of bamboo are great, stacking them up, um, that even if it's a little complex for brand new people, uh, they still kind of get into it, they still enjoy it, because that theme is so nice uh, and accessible and just fun, and you can just have fun moving the panda around, and that might be what you do. Uh, and the fact that he poos out the little pieces is just a nice little bit of theme, um, to go with it that, that, that just carries it through. Um, but for gamers, there is there is a bit of strategy. Yes, it's a much lighter game for most people. Uh, this is probably aimed at a slightly either younger audience or you're just looking for a really light kind of uh, thing just to pass the time. It says it takes 45 minutes, two to four people just building up this garden of bamboo. But it looks brilliant on the table. When you've got a completed uh, game and you see all the various bamboos at different heights and the map that you've created it's the colors are so bright um, But it's also got the symbols on for colorblind people. That's really helpful um, So that yellow also has a very distinct symbol so they don't need to be able to see the difference that kind of thing Just a nice thing that they thought about um, It's just all really clear really colorful um, And so is really pleasing to look at and whether we play as two players three players or four I uh, I have a really fun time with this. Um, again, maybe just that panda should be reason enough to buy this game. Uh, but it's a fun game as well. It's generally a very popular one. Uh, it's it's won an award, a uh, Golden Geek Award. Um, production's lovely. Uh, Antoine Bowser is a designer that we've looked at before with Seven Wonders Duel. Um, you can check that video out as well, but just really nice designs, really clean, um, yeah, lots of fun. And this, um, I will happily play at any time, and with certain people coming around, this will be the one that I pull out and go, you want a slightly heavier game, slightly longer, they've played maybe gateway games before, tickets ride, that kind of thing, now let's try Takenoko. It's an excellent kind of next step into uh, strategy games, if you like. Because you're going after three different types of objectives, you've got that little bit more to be thinking about, a little bit more planning of, if I go here, I can actually complete these at once, and if I gamble on which new card I take, do I complete it straight away, or how's the board set up, when do I take what when, there's that little bit more thinking, um, but as I say, the aesthetic and design just carries it through, so it can work as a gateway, but it's probably just that next step, uh, ideal for that, and not overly expensive for the amount of uh, components and game that you get out of this. That's about it. That is why I like Takenoko. I'm going to show you this box again because it's lovely. Look at that little face. Um, yes, thank you very much for watching. Do follow us on social media on Twitter at WSumElmore. Do follow us on Facebook. We're posting more of our kind of responses to different games that we play on our Facebook page as well. So check that out. Do subscribe to this channel if you don't already, hit the little bell icon, uh, and we hope to see you next time. I have been Dieter for Winsome Lose Small. Goodbye.